Hey guys, welcome back to Fantastic Fertility. Today's video we're talking about something that is very near and dear to my heart, which is going braless. Um, I have been without a bra for more than four years now, but who's counting? Me. <laughs> And I wanted to just share my, my story with you, how I started up with being braless. And then I want to share with you some actual tips and practical advice that you can use if you want to make the transition away from bras. Now, one thing that I think is important to say off the bat is that obviously going braless is a very personal choice. I'm not saying that you have to go braless. I am just saying that for me, this was the right choice and I really like it. And I feel very like free and carefree and I just love so many aspects of it. And I want to just like share those with you and just give you my perspective so that, you know, you can at least have informed choice on the whole matter, which is like one of my big things, um, so that you can just go ahead and make the decision for yourself, knowing more about your options. Now, one of the biggest things that I hear from people when the subject of going braless comes up is, oh, no, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I am too big. I can't do that. Uh, the world will know. <laughs> and all these uh, concerns come up. Totally valid concerns, um, you know, when you're first trying to think about that transition. But I can tell you that as a 32G slash 32H, like right around that size, um, size doesn't matter uh, whether that is a large size or a small size you can be braless no matter your size it's your chest <laughs> you can make that decision so um i made the transition from wearing a bra to going braless about four years ago like i said and at the time i was in college and to give you some more context here's what was happening with me around that time i currently have and i have had in the past <laughs> a uh, large bra size and the issue that was happening was I had a small band size and a large cup size and that combination is very very difficult to find in stores for a well-fitting bra and so I was spending like hours every week in these online forums uh, one of the biggest ones is the one on reddit called a bra that fits and I think that for most people, it's a great resource, but for me, I was like obsessed with finding the right bra that fit. I uh, measured myself correctly. And one of my biggest issues was that I was wasting my time, my money, and my energy on tr desperately trying to find a bra that actually fit me. Because it seemed like no matter what store I went to or which online shop I ordered from, all the bras were taking way too much time for me to order, like just finding one that I liked. And when they did come, it felt like a waste of money because I was spending like 65 to $85 per bra because it was a special size from a particular boutique, from a particular, bo from a particular boutique, from a particular boutique website and they weren't even really fitting me. And so I was spending like all this money on shipping from these places and you know waiting for them to come in the mail and then I would try them on and they wouldn't even be comfortable <laughs> they, you know the lace would be itchy and the band would be too tight and like the straps and just everything about it was like torturous and I spent time driving to um, all these different stores and I'm not just talking about like Victoria's Secret stores because here's a hint <laughs> Victoria's Secret has terrible sizing and it's very inaccurate and you just don't want to go there. If you do want to get a properly fitting bra, I recommend that you do not go to Victoria's Secret um, because they just don't size you correctly and it's much better to find a bra that actually fits if you want to go down that route. And so I was driving like across the state and over to like Rhode Island <laughs> and to just all these random different like boutique shops that carried these special sizes. And again, I was wasting like hours going to do this and researching these different shops and then I would get there and I couldn't even find one that I liked and that felt actually comfortable. So again, just to recap, I was really putting in all this time, this money and this energy 
and not just like the physical energy of like going to all these stores and like you know putting in the hours shopping online but this mental energy it was just so frustrating for me that I couldn't find something that actually fit my body and then this all brought me to this realization why was I doing this to myself why was I spending all this time and money and energy desperately searching for this thing that is going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to have to wear it like all day. It's very constrictive and I just don't really even want it. Like why am I doing this to myself? And I really started to like reflect on that and one day I just didn't wear a bra. And I went to my classes at college and no one noticed and I liked it because I didn't have anything constricting my rib cage and I just felt very like free and I felt very positive and just happy and just this huge sense of being carefree and calm and like I was just letting go of all that stress that was wrapped up in all the bra shopping. I started to just do that more and more days in a row. And then eventually it got to the point where I hadn't really worn a bra in like three weeks. And I kind of realized that and I was like, hmm, you know, it's winter time right now. I can like cover up with a sweater and scarves and stuff and coats. Like what's going to happen when it gets to hotter weather? I just kept going and the hotter weather kind of came and went and then it was the summertime and I was still going braless and this just continued. And it's been four years later <laughs> and I have been braless like 24 7 I'm talking about going to work to special events and weddings to funerals to the gym horseback riding while doing yoga while going hiking while going to run errands total freedom in the chestal area <laughs> and it was just so so freeing and I am just so passionate about this because for me I was in such a place of frustration and I felt like society was putting this big pressure on me that I needed to do this thing and then I just realized that I didn't and just that realization was so powerful and empowering that is what I want to share with you if someone wants to wear a bra they absolutely can but if someone doesn't want to wear a bra there is absolutely no shame in that whatsoever. In fact, I think it's very, very freeing and empowering. So a big question for people when they start to hear about all this stuff is, okay, you know, that can work in the wintertime when you're wearing big coats and sweaters and scarves to cover up, but what about the summertime? What if people can see your nipples? <laughs> and it's like a swear word or something to even like bring that up and to say that. But I have a news flash for you. Everyone in the world has nipples. And it's true! Everyone has nipples! Women, men, people, mammals, everyone. <laughs> and so eventually I just realized over time that it didn't even matter. It didn't even matter. Everyone has them. It's like your elbow. It's like your wrist. It's like your nose. Everyone has it. What is the big deal? So eventually that really started to sink in and I gained the confidence to wear these different types of tops as the weather warmed up. So guys, that is the basic story of how I went through my transition from wearing a bra to being braless 24-7. Now some big questions that I usually get that I want to address right off the bat are, one, what do you do about the jiggliness <laughs> and for that what I recommend is simply wearing a tank top so I have a tank top on right now this is the same type of tank top that I wear um, almost every day I have this in a few different colors I have the gray one I have a white one and then I also have black and navy and this color scheme um, tends to take care of most things that I wear um, these I'll wear with like darker shirts and I will typically wear these underneath um, shirts like when I go to the gym and then gray works for wearing um, under white clothing or lighter clothing and so does white and so for me those are really great now these tank tops are from Target or Target as most people call it I like these because they're very soft 
and they are stretchy, but they're also supportive. And they just give like the gentlest amount of support where you're not going all over the place. It's just a gentle amount of support to keep you fairly centered. This particular brand is actually Isabel Maternity. <laughs> um, I am not a typical maternity client, I guess you could say. I'm not pregnant or anything like that, but I was in Target and I was exploring the different tank tops they had and they ran out of the old brand I used to get and so uh, I was looking around and it, these were the next best thing. What I really like about these, again, is like they're so soft and comfortable and the biggest thing that I want to share with you guys is that these do not have any type of built-in bra. Like what even is a built-in bra? It's just like a stupid like elastic band that like doesn't actually cover your boobs <laughs> and it's like even worse than like a real bra I feel like in terms of its comfort. So I don't deal with that type of thing. I just skip it. There's no like internal fake support <laughs> inside of this. It's just a plain tank top with nothing special about it except that it's very comfortable. So I do recommend these. They're available at Target. You can probably order them online. Um, super great. I just have like four of them that I alternate and I wear underneath all my tops. Again, whether I'm going to the gym or to work or I'm around the house or I'm going on errands, um, this is usually what I'll wear. Now that's not to say that there are some days when I just wear a normal shirt and nothing underneath it because I absolutely do. But for most times, I wear the tank top. Um, another reason why I like to wear the tank top is because it actually provides a bit of insulation and a little bit of um, a smoothing factor. So I know that not everyone is as comfortable with their nipples as I am. <laughs> and so I totally 100% get that. Um, and so wearing a tank top underneath just kind of helps to smooth and it provides a little bit of insulation to keep you a little bit warmer so that as you're going through um, temperature fluctuations throughout the day, going inside and outside of a house or a building, um, it kind of takes care of that and helps everything to be smoothed out and not too noticeable if that's what you're going for. Another big question that I get is, does it hurt to stop wearing bras? Like what happens in that time? I know that a lot of women will wear bras all the time, like even when they go to sleep, because um, there can be some tenderness going on. For me, yes, if things were a little bit tender in those first several weeks, but after those first several weeks, I was fine. And I haven't had like any breast tenderness ever since then. And what happens is when you constantly wear a bra all the time, the ligaments inside your breasts are not being used. And so they can atrophy. And so when you take that support away, from a bra that's physically holding you up all the time, your ligaments and your breasts need to start doing the work themselves. And so yes, it can take a few weeks and the ligaments are getting use at that point in time and so it does take a little while for them to strengthen. But once they do, you are golden. And they're gonna provide support for you on their own. Another big question that people have is what about bounce? <laughs> um, what if you're like going downstairs and there's bounce going on? So one way to help with that, again, is to simply wear a tank top underneath to kind of help things, just have that touch of gentle support. And the other thing is posture. So, you know, as you're walking around throughout your day, as you're going downstairs, a lot of it is just your posture and just, you know, standing up straight and supporting yourself as you walk. If you're kind of hunched over and you're going along, things can <laughs> start to bounce. But if, you know, you walk tall and confident, um, things kind of fall into place and it's much more comfortable that way and it does reduce the bounce. The next big question is, what will other people think? What will happen when I go outside into the world and interact with other real humans? <laughs> what will they think about me being braless? And here's the thing, screw what they think. <laughs> Forget what they think. This is about you, this is about your comfort and your own bodily autonomy. Remember, everyone in the world has nipples and no one's breasts are perfect and that's okay. And to go along with that, another big, big point that I really wanna make is this point of 
body positivity. You are unique. You have a unique shape all by yourself, and that is honestly beautiful. For me, you know, one is bigger than the other. <laughs> My nipples are not exactly even, and that is totally fine. I am not the perfect specimen, and no one is. It's okay to live in your unique natural shape. The shape that a bra gives you is this round, unnatural shape that people have grown accustomed to throughout the years because that's what we're used to seeing every day. It's okay to just live in your natural shape and to embrace that part of your body and just love yourself. I'm a big believer in body positivity and I think it's really, really empowering. Women's breasts naturally do not form two perfectly perky symmetrical circles. <laughs> Real people have breasts that come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, and more often they're not symmetrical. If you didn't know, it's actually way more common to have asymmetrical breasts than symmetrical ones. Typically the left side is a little bit bigger, and that's the same in my case, <laughs> but people can definitely be bigger on the right side or, you know, have more of a disproportion, and that is totally, totally fine. So guys, if you have more questions in addition to the ones that I just answered, please leave a comment below. I really want to hear from you on this. This is something that I am so passionate about, just like with fertility awareness, and I want to start a conversation because I think it's so important to talk about. So please leave a comment below. So in this next part of the video, I want to actually, you know, be transparent, not literally, but figuratively, <laughs> and walk the walk, not just talk the talk, and show you guys like what this actually looks like in real life. So my left side is bigger than my right side. My nipples are not even, and that is something about myself that I totally embrace. Looking from the side, this is what that looks like. A limited amount of space here. Now one tip that I have for people who might want to just be starting off is you can just wear a scarf and you can even do this in the summer. This one is a very lightweight scarf and in the winter time if you want to wear a heavier scarf that's fine too. Simply kind of wrap it around and just kind of loosely drape it, kind of make the sides a little bit uneven just to give more of like a flow. There's a cat hair in my mouth now. <laughs> so I'm not exactly a fashionista. I don't know if the scarf goes perfectly with this white shirt, but this is typically what I used to do a lot of the time when I was first starting off with going braless. I would wear a really thick sweater, um, a tank top underneath, and then I would wear a nice colorful patterned um, winter scarf and just drape it like this. And I did this for years at my old job and no one ever noticed anything. When it was brought up to a coworker, they were like, what? You haven't worn a bra this whole time? And I was like, yeah, no one even noticed. So this is a great way to kind of start off if you want to just get the feel of things. Now, another huge tip that I have for um, kind of camouflaging nipples, again, if that is a concern for you, um, I understand it can especially be a concern for people who are um, in a more professional environment. And so that's where patterned shirts can really come in handy. So I highly recommend wearing um, a patterned shirt. It can kind of draw the eye away. And so this is what that would look like. I absolutely love this shirt. It has a little bear pattern on it. I wear this shirt all the time. I used to wear this to work all the time. Helps to draw the eye away, to smooth things out, and it's very comfy. This is another example of what this would look like, just using plaid. Um, I know that plaid is another really common pattern that people love to wear. Um, I particularly love this one because it's very bright and vibrant red. Don't mind the cat hair that's part of the uniform, but this is what that would look like from the side, from the front, and from the other side. Now this shirt here is a little bit more, again, don't mind the cat hair. This shirt is even a bit transparent as you can see. You can see my fingers through the shirt, the fabric. But again, wearing a tank top underneath totally takes care of that. I love wearing this shirt in all seasons. I love it in the fall because it's still a long shirt, but I also wear it in the summer a lot because it is a bit transparent, so it's still very breathable in the heat. Now this shirt doesn't have a pattern on it, but again, as you can see, because of the tank top and just my posture, um, there's not a lot going on here. And so I feel very comfortable wearing something like this. From the side, from the front, 
and then from the other side. This is a shirt that I would typically wear to the gym. Um, it kind of has a slit down the back and then it ties in the back. And the tank top kind of just sits underneath, um, similar to how a bra would. I would feel um, very comfortable wearing this to the gym. I am going to point out that it has a stain here. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It just appeared like today or yesterday. I know that I need to remove that stain. It had just come out of the wash actually, and that's when I found the stain, when it was right out of the wash. So I need to do like a stain treatment on it or something. I know, I'm gonna take care of it, don't worry. <laughs> Ignoring the stain, which I am pointing at, it's very breathable, it's an Under Armour shirt. Um, and again, I'm just wearing the tank top underneath. Can't really even tell that I'm wearing it from the front. And then on the sides, it's very, um, you know, my arms are kind of covering it. This one's kind of just like an everyday t-shirt. Um, I can wear this to the gym, I can wear it around the house, I can wear it to go out and do errands, um, or I can even wear it to work because it's just like a basic navy color. So this is one um, that is very common for me to wear and I really like this one. I'm a minimalist and so I love basic shirts like this. Now it is the summertime, but I'm still going to demonstrate this shirt. This one is a nice combination of the idea of a pattern that kind of distracts the eye and the fact that it's a sweater and it's a thicker material, of course. And so again, it provides more of a smoothing effect and the pattern kind of uh, makes you look all over the shirt. I got this shirt at like Savers one time. Um, I think it speaks for itself. <laughs> But I really love this shirt and I love wearing it. Okay, it's really nice to get out of that sweater because it was getting really hot in here. And so I am dying of heat a little bit. But this one is kind of just like a Henley shirt. The thing that I want to stress here is that no one's breasts are going to be perfectly shaped. It's totally okay to be asymmetrical. It's totally okay for your nipples to not exactly point in the direction that you'd like them to point. <laughs> and we're back to my trusty white tee. So guys, those are my tips on going braless and different types of strategies that you can incorporate, practical strategies that you can actually use in your everyday life to achieve this if it's something that you wanna do. Again, I know that this might not be the right path for everyone, but for me, since I've done it, I have felt so much freedom and I just really, really love it. And I want people to know that it's a legitimate option that you can take whether you are in a professional setting, no matter what your age is. It's a totally valid choice for each person to pursue if that's what they want to do. So before you go, I want to hear from you. Please leave a comment below. Tell me, are you braless? Were you thinking about going braless? How long have you been braless? What are your fears? What are your concerns? What are your questions? I am more than happy to answer them in the comments. I just need you to let me know. So go ahead and write down below. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a great day or night whenever you are watching watching this and hey don't forget to subscribe if you are new around here I make videos about all kinds of topics related to fertility awareness charting body literacy body positivity and all these different things in between so go ahead and click that subscribe button right below and that's it I will see you in the next video bye guys